thank you madam and I would, at the outset I'd like to thank the department for inviting me here to speak about the physician burnout this is a topic which is usually not discussed so i do not have any conflict of interest when i am speaking on this topic but i have been i'll be using some of the images from the google uh, just to convey some of the messages and if you want to get the references for the presentation uh, you are most welcome for that you can get it from me so when we look at how the world perceives doctors what should be the traits of the doctors so we we are considered to be having the highest level of morality dedication and whatever is expected in the world from a ideal person it is expected from the doctors uh, how are the two most important thing here to understand that we should be having the traits that we should genuinely care for our patients and have lot of empathy in our communication and interaction with our patient and people around so with this background let's look at the uh, a case vignette a 50 year old doctor working in a government setup starts his outpatient at about 9:30 uh sees about 65 patients directly and also supervises his uh, senior resident's work about five patients is being shown by the senior resident to him and about sees six patients being shown by the junior resident however while providing the services he gets irritable on small matters shouts at his residents in for being incompetent gets irritable a patient asks for some thing extra informi information or questions he passes sarcastic comments to the patient and their caregivers later while talking to his colleagues would frequently report that the system is faulty and rotten and nothing is going to improve now this is something how many of you have not faced while working in pgi that's the question which i'm asking to the students or to the uh, my colleagues that how how often do you introspect that possibly you end up behaving in this way yeah any any answers to this yes we so we are working in an ideal condition i don't think so 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 this is where we we need to understand that this is a common scenario in most of the chambers of the doctors and why this occurs uh, so so and if you try to understand what is the doctor going through this is what we need to understand is he is going through a physician burnout now we we try to understand physician burnout so basically we understand that this is basically the term burnout here is used as a metaphor and why it is used as a metaphor let's try to understand that when a toy's battery run out it stops working isn't it when a toy's battery will run out it it is not going to run anymore until unless you change the battery but what happens when a doctor's batteries run out do they ever stop working the answer is definitely no and that's why that all of you have gone through your 10 plus 2 preparation for neat and then gone to become a mbbs graduate and you are here as a post graduate and some of them have gone beyond this so all of us keeps on going through burnout and so burnout occurs in every phase of medical career and it's not just limited to the medical professionals we all go through this so what happens that when you keep on going working as a dysfunctional person rather than stopping to work that is basic the understanding of a physician burnout so similarly if you look at what happens when the car's fuel go away it will stop working but doctors don't stop working so if you try to define burnout it's the simpler way to define it is as it's an erosion of human soul in short the doctor himself is not happy and we try to define it broadly or the basic definition of burnout is it's a persistent negative work related state of mind in a normal individual when i say normal individual basically here we are trying to distinguish it from a person with any kind of a mental illness and that is primarily characterized by exhaustion which is accompanied by distress and a sense of reduced effectiveness decreased motivation and development of a dysfunctional attitude and behavior at work so that is where uh we we try to understand the burnout and there are three basic components of burnout one is the emotional exhaustion 
depersonalization and a sense of low personal accomplishment. So all these three com contribute to the decreased effectiveness at work and not necessary that these are some kind of stages of burnout, but not necessary that they occur in a sequence, they can occur in any, any format and uh, a person may have a difficulty in one domain or can have difficulty in all the domains. So how do we understand the exhaustion? So it is basically at physical and emotional energy levels that are extremely low and are in a downward spiral. And a common thought process is, I'm not going, I'm not sure how long I can keep on going like this. So, so somebody who's working in the OPD right from the morning till the evening every day or uh, thrice a week or four times a week and then is involved in emergency care or somewhere. So the, the feeling is that how long I can carry on with this and how things are going to move. The deeper personalization is basically understood as a compassion fatigue. So at this stage, the doctors themselves are not emotionally available to their patient or anyone else to that matter. And emotional energy is understood as, a, as some kind of a dry energy that you, you are not emotionally able to connect with anybody. And this is basically signaled by a lot of cynicism, sarcasm, and the need to vent out about your patients or about your job. So, so you, you become more of a cynical person. So what do we understand by cynicism? That you have lost the ability to care, empathize, and connect with the patient, staff, and the co-workers. And you even end up blaming, shaming, or demonizing the people whom you are charged of caring for. And you also start feeling guilty about the same later on. So that is where we need to understand that's where the whole cynicism comes in. And the lack of efficacy or sense of lack of personal accomplishment that the person himself begins to doubt the meaning or about the quality of their own work and they may start thinking like, what's the use? My work doesn't really serve a purpose anymore and may worry about making mistakes if things don't get better soon. So that's where the, the whole sense of lack of personal accomplishment comes in. So this is basically how we understand burnout. So uh, who develops it? All levels of medical professionals are at a risk and starting from the people who are studying medical students, that is the MBBS students, interns, residents, fellows, junior staff, senior staff and everybody. However, it is more often seen in frontline healthcare workers who are at a greater risk, those working in the internal medicine, especially those in the emergency setting. So if you, if you look at uh, this, uh, what is the outcome of burnout? Who all get affected? It's not the physician who is himself suffering. Uh, because a physician is suffering, so the patient is suffering, the family members or the caregivers of the uh, patients are suffering, their relationships, that is the relationship of the physician with his colleagues, with his family, with his uh, patient is suffering, and of course, their families also suffer, and often their colleagues who are working with them, who are junior, who cannot voice things to a physician who is burnt out may be suffering. So how common it is? So it is understood that 54% of the doctors say that they are burnt out. This is a survey from US, and they about almost all, if I say 84%, say that they are stressed out. But one of the marker which is being taken as how much are you going to recommend the profession so about 60% of the doctors say that they're not going to recommend their children to take medicine as their as the carrier. So that's where we need to understand how much the doctors are getting affected. And it, to simply say, is it increasing over time? So again, a survey from US which compared the data uh, or longitudinally follow up the, followed up the doctors from 2011 to 14 suggests that there was about 10% increase in the rate of burnout over the period of three years. So that, that is, again, understandable that these things are increasing very fast. Now, if, if you look at the data coming from US again, so as I've said, that there is increase in the prevalence, and in terms of uh, satisfaction with work-life balance, again, you see that satisfaction with work-life balance is going down. And uh, if you compare with uh, general US population, the prevalence rate of burnout is higher among the physicians, and dissatisfaction with the work is again higher 
in physicians compared to those with other professions. So that's where we, we need to understand there's a basic difference for how the doctors are themselves suffering. And in terms of carrier, there are different kind of differences or the uh, image which we have for the early carrier uh, physicians and those who are in the middle level of carrier. So the, the early carrier, basically those who are in less than 10 years of their practice, who may be residents or other, they have lower satisfaction with overall carrier choice. They have higher frequency of work home conflicts and higher rates of depersonalization. Whereas those who have moved further in their career, they, they move complain about working for long hours and they, they are more dissatisfied with taking all the overnight calls and they have lower satisfaction with the speciality of their choice which they have taken and they also complain of the work-life balance issues and they have more emotional exhaustion and burnout rather than just the depersonalization. And when the data of U.S. is compared with other countries, again, the rates are possibly higher in U.S. So, and then if you look at the differences between uh, the men and women, you, you, you will see that the, the almost the rates are comparable in the early and the middle career uh, professionals, but the, in the later part, females report more burnout compared to uh, men. And when we look at the, the primary cares, the surgical specialties, internal medicine and others, again, if, if you look at this, the primary care physician usually will have more burnout compared to the specialist. And in terms of private practice and the academic practice, again, people, those who are in private practice will usually have more burnout compared to those who are in the academic setup. So if we, if we all are feeling, uh, having this feeling of burnout, we can understand what our colleagues who are in the private sector may be going through. In terms of speciality, if you look at that, the highest, uh, if you look at the percentage in terms of burnout, highest level of burnout is reported in those working in the emergency setting. And uh, if you look at the level of dissatisfaction with uh, the work-life balance or the percentage satisfied with their work-life balance, again, you will see that neurosurgeons have the lowest level of satisfaction in terms of work-life balance. So that is where you need to understand it varies from speciality to speciality. And here is your speciality where you stand, but I understand many of you are working in emergency setting. And some of your subspecialties may not be uh, reported here, but pediatric subspecialty again have lower level of satisfaction, but burnout rates are comparable to many of the other specialities. How common is burnout in Indian setting? Again, we have studies from different parts of the country and different uh, instruments have been used to assess burnout. But the, this data generally suggests there is high level of stress and burnout. We have a meta-analysis coming from, for the Indian data. And uh, this basically suggests that uh, in the 15 studies which were included in this uh, uh, meta-analysis, the rate of emotional exhaustion is about 24% and depersonalization is 27% and our personal accomplishment uh, dysfunction is about 23%. And who are more at risk? As per the Indian data suggest, those who are young, females, who are unmarried and have, are working in a difficult working condition, they are at a higher risk of burnout. Uh, what are the basic drivers of burnout in physicians? We need to understand that basically the conditioning in our medical profession is such that we need to be working hard, we should be perfectionist, we, if uh, things are required you should be available for your patient, you should do everything and so on and so forth. So never show your weakness and so forth. So that's one of the major reasons that how medical profession works leads to burnout. Other things are the specific kind of jobs like on-call duties but the so-called professional rivalries or the working conditions which basically include the local politics or the personality clashes or who is part of your team, who is not part of your team and how things are happening. And if you are trying to have a personal life that because if you want to have your personal goals and personal achievements, so you have to spare time for that and that's where the work-life conflict will start. And of course, uh, at the end of the day, the leadership under which you are working makes a lot of difference. Uh, sometimes you will see that uh, you, you may have leaders or who are your supervisors, but they do not contribute to your learning. And they, they basically end up criticizing you. And sometimes they, 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 and this happens because they are themselves unskilled or absent or they are themselves weak. They will not take decisions. So that's where we need to understand drives physician burnout. 
Other thing we have all understood is the long working hours and the so-called work-related pressure which we all need to have, uh, we face in day-to-day -day practice. And uh, the so-called loss of meaning in medicine and patient care is gradually becoming more and more among physicians because of lack of uh, support from the paraprofessionals and more and more responsibility is being shifted to the doctors and but at the same time you do not have autonomy or flexibility in taking your decisions or working in the condition where you want to work and there are a lot of institutional challenges which can also be uh, contribute to physician burnout that when you do not have the peer support or pe people don't behave in a professional way with you or the leadership does not take the decisions which they are required to take. So these will all drive to the uh, burnout. And what are the uh, risk factors? We, we need to understand that high level of work-life conflict, that this is the biggest driver if we try to understand that when you want to have your personal life and work life and you want to balance and we are not able to balance, that will drive you to the burnout. And work is often interrupted by the personal concerns, uh, concerns and uh, there is high level of anger, loneliness, anxiety which is emerging and st you have relationship issues at the workplace that you're not getting along. For example, you're working here, so as a junior resident, if you are not getting along well with your senior resident or with your consultant or you, you have your thesis work, your seminar, con case conference, and other things. So if you are not having a lot of relationship issues at the workplace, it will again lead to uh, the uh, burnout. Now, there are many people who are self-conscious and they want to perform well so often they keep on evaluating themselves, although others may be saying that you're doing well. So when you often start having this own feeling that you always keep on questioning about your own competency, that's the personality trait which predisposes you to have more burnout. And again, when you are not able to unplug with your work, you, you have gone out of your work, you've done your shift, you reach home, but you're again thinking about your patient uh, and keep calling up your colleagues, maybe juniors or seniors or batchmates and asking what is happening with that patient. I have done this work. I have not done this work. Or you come back and do your work. So you are not able to unplug from your work. That again leads to burnout. Of course, regular use of alcohol and other drugs and sleep deprivation will again predispose you to the burnout. And as I've said, the data from the uh, India and other parts of the world also suggests basically it is more common in young females. Those were not married and have long working hours and lack of job satisfaction. And what are the personality traits? Now, this is where we need to understand that actually the simpler way to say, say is that those who take more responsibility of their work, who are more conscious of their work, those who want to perform well at work, those who are more committed to their work, are actually more prone to uh, burnout. Because that's where, that because you have that tendency that you will give priority to the work than anything else, so that will lead to a lot of uh, problems. So we, 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 if we see a lot of our colleagues who are workaholic, working for long hours, they, they can sacrifice their personal life, which is understood as masochistic traits, for the work. That's where, uh, at the end of the day, they are going to be uh, at a higher risk of developing the burnout. And what are the organizational factors? When we say organizational factors, the institutional factors which contribute to that burnout. Uh, when you are exposed to the excessive workload, they, you are given the work which you are not supposed to do, or uh, you are given a work which is which may not be following uh, falling in your domain, but you are expected to do. Uh, so that often increases the risk of burnout. And more and more time you spend in face to face interacting with the patients, documentation, or doing some kind of administrative work, you are at more higher risk of burnout. Of course, the long working hours and the frequency of on call is again important. In the Western world, so-called the documentation in the electronic medical records is becoming a major issue because you have to document everything on time and in the real time. So, so if you are not documenting things in the real time and uh, we are not far away from this, where we are talking about digitalization of medical records across the country, this is what is going to happen. And for, I was just talking to some of my colleagues, they say that, for example, they, somebody who's working in NHS as a primary care physician, you get about five minutes time to see a patient and enter everything in the electronic medical records. So everything done in five minutes. So uh, we, we, we are not far away from this and in many parts of the country this is already now being done. For example, when the, now Punjab is trying to employ people in Mohalla Kling, they are emphasizing the same fact. So, so, so we, everybody will be scared when you're entering data, if you miss out on anything, anything. So all this will increase a lot of uh, stress. 
and amount of time you spent at home once you go back again increases the risk because whatever you carry home will increase your problems and of course the risk of malpractice suits so pe people those who are working in private practice they are that's a major concern from them again a uh, lot of differences are seen in those who are practicing in the urban and rural area or the academic and non academic centers and the inpatient and the outpatient or the emergency se setting so those who are working in the emergency setting face more burnout compared to those who are working in the outpatient setting and those who are working in the urban and rural area again depending on the local politics and other things influences the rate of burnout but in general it is in terms of academician and non academician people those who are working in the private practice sector se setting especially corporate hospital or working running their own clinic both as, a, as an administrator and clinician they suffer from more burnout than what we suffer from and in terms of patient characteristics when you are dealing with lot of demanding patients who talk about their entitlement adherence compliance and other things they will make the physician more at a risk and when you have lack of control over your env environment that administration do not support vis a vis you support the administration to run the hospital so that's where you are at, at a higher risk and i have already spoken about the leadership skills so uh, basically if we will look at the uh, poor functioning of an institute when a physician do not get sufficient rewards have limited interpersonal collaboration or lim limited opportunities for advancement and the institute do not provide them real life social support they are at a much higher risk of burnout so the major contributors are the overwhelming demands social conflict at the workplace lack of or loss of resources insufficient reward and absence of fairness now absence of fairness is something which is being talked about that if you are contributing uh, in in our institutional setup we often jokingly discuss and say that uh, the basic rule in pgi or in, in india is jo kaam karta hai usko aur zyada do jo nahi karta usko kuch mat bol so that's the basic norm and dictum way in we, which we we work and that's something we talk about lack of fairness and although you keep on working too much you are you are taking the shouldering the responsibility of others but you are still not rewarded and uh, people uh, often say again if if we uh, try to understand the insufficient uh, rewards uh, or the things how work again one of the again common dictum jokingly talked about uh in uh, when we are having a cup of coffee among us if you show me the face i'll tell you the rule so that's where the things work the how the systems work so that's where the whole problem arises why people suffer from burnout and we know the social conflicts or relationship problems which faculty have and maybe everybody is threatened that if somebody else is progressing i it's not that i'm happy about his or her progress i think that if he is progressing my progress is going to stop and we start having social uh, interpersonal problems so i'll just skip this part now uh, what are the factors uh, uh, if you look at the indian data further uh, what does indian data suggest this is mainly for in relation to uh, the data comes mainly for the residents so there is no difference across the medical and the surgical specialties the factors which determine physician burnout mainly is the workload lower chance of the recreational activities higher verbal and physical abuse by the patient and the caregivers and lack of empathy by the seniors and of course the residents suffer more burnout than the faculty and in terms of residents other factors which contribute to the burnout includes the unsatisfactory hostels inadequate library facilities frequent examinations and excessive competitiveness among the students and the so called political conflict jealousy and the peer rivalry this is what we all do and we need to all learn to refrain from it so that in we, we can not only protect ourselves but also protect our colleagues uh, so in the in the private practice again what does the indian data suggest that uh, the, although private practice will give you more control over the, your job style but uh, some people say it is maybe associated with lower burnout but higher work engagement as a personality trait will always lead to the higher burnout now what are the basic combinations if you look at the which will contribute to the burnout that the uh, as a clinician how much skills you have in terms of solving a problem finding a meaning in your work purpose and practicing mindfulness that will contribute to how much you are going to have burnout and in terms of the external factors in terms of modeling how your teachers or your colleagues are behaving with you and your own internal attributes the kind of person you are so 
in terms of personal factors which can be protective or we can help you not to face burnout is the capacity to bounce back when when you are uh, facing a problem how much you can are able to withstand the hardship and are able to repair yourself and come back if you are not able to do that that is where you are going to have a problem and when you have a positive atti attitude when you are facing stress or a disruptive change for example simple example if there, as a resident you have been scolded by your faculty you, you can take it in two different ways that why I was scolded? Is it that I did not do my work? Uh, is it because of my incompetency? Or you can say that the person is wrong, I am right. So it will totally depend on how you take it and how you, you manage things. Of course, uh, if you have your own self-directedness -direct and you are cooperative with others, you are able to deal with others in a better way, you, will, uh, you, you, you have a less chance of uh, having a burnout. And of course, that how much resilience you have that you are able to face stress and you are able to manage and the kind of emotional IQ we, we call as or the emotional intelligence that how you're able to perceive a situation, understand and manage your emotion in a particular situation. So more negativistic kind of attitude you're going to have, you are going to have more burnout. Of course, we need to improve the organizational functionalities that we need to improve the internal communication system. So give the right information to the right people so that uh, they, then the systems work better. Because I was just talking to one of my colleagues who, who just came to show his child uh, in PGI. So he, once he was seen by a clinician, he was sent to get cert certain investigations done, who himself is working in a corporate hospital. He says that if I just write on the card, this investigation is to be done, or I just enter in the uh, system, the patient, I am now just waiting for the report to come, the patient will just need to reach the investigation side and everything will be done. But we all know how our patient and caregivers have to run and how much we have to uh, struggle in all this. So there's no right information kind of a system. Uh, when that is not there, it will lead to more burnout. So we need to develop those kind of things. And individual satisfaction, that how much uh, the system supports a person when you join an institute or when you're working in an institute, this, the environment, the institute provides you what you want to do, how, want you, how you want to progress, rather than the institute asks you to do, this is what is you are supposed to do, and just do this, don't think beyond this. So you, you stop creativity, you stop career development, so we, we need to understand that, and of course, the institute should provide us enough time to have a work-life balance, family time, that often helps. And in, for females, having kindergarten facilities or the crutch facilities in the, in the hospital itself often helps or protects from the burnout. And again, for professional development, there should be all opportunities and the leadership should be a competent one. Now, burnout can occur in two ways that somebody can have an acute precipitation of burnout, especially this happens when you, you have a so-called traumatic kind of an event, like you've been beaten by a patient or there's a lawsuit and so on. Otherwise, all of us keep on going through burnout in a small step-by-step -step and by, by suddenly then there's a precipitating factor and you develop the full-blown features of burnout. So uh, initially, if you look at the stages of burnout, they have been described in different ways. But whenever we join a new place, we, we have this compulsion to, to prove ourselves that what we want to do and you start pushing yourself very hard to do things and you start neglecting your personal needs. There's a lot of displacement of conflict and there's a revision of your value system, what you believed or what you thought earlier uh, about your self-worth and job starts changing and gradually you start withdrawing from your social situation, situations and gradually you go on to develop the full-blown burnout syndrome. So the other, other uh, way of describing it is that initially there's a lot of enthusiasm when you jo join a new place or you join the profession but gradually you, you go through the whole phase of uh, chronic stress, burnout, and then you become a habitual burnout person. That you, 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 you do, no, do more think about it beyond that. So what are the consequences? You have lower level, uh, that patient will have lower satisfaction and the quality of care you provide is low. There are high risk of medical errors and high risk of malpractice suits which you're going to face. And of course, people leave their jobs when they are working in a condition which leads to higher burnout kind of a phase. And there's a lot of friction in the personal relationships. And suddenly then you start isolating yourself from others and from also from your fam family members. So you become more and more lonely and don't interact with uh, people. And of course, substance use uh, is a very common outcome and drug abuse. If you look at after the menial workers, 
those who are construction worker doctors are the number two with respect to use of substances that's where we stand and there is high uh, rate of suicide and the divorce among the doctors and if you, if you look at the suicide rates they are more in women the odds ratio is about 2.27 compared to the general population and 1.41 for the male physicians so that's the other outcome of physician burnout and basically you go through the death spiral when i say death spiral as you more and more you are burnt out more and more stress you are facing we all understand this consequences of stress on the cardiovascular system and the endocrine system and of course you end up developing cardiovascular diseases and other things and you, you are developing more and more physical morbidity and this is something which clearly is depicted from the data from a survey which was done by ima which suggests that uh, if, if we compare to the general population the general population lifespan is about 72 years whereas the doctors die at the age of 59 so that's where you, you are losing 13 years to serve the people so we, we all need to understand that we need to be very careful uh, in how we organize our work life balance and how we uh, should be behaving towards our, our work now this is something which we need to understand how do you recognize burnout uh, among your colleagues among uh, people with you are working with so somebody who suddenly starts disappearing who was working well who was very committed to his work is now no more taking phone calls is taking too many leaves or there are unexplained uh, absences at work or somebody who's coming late who is was always regular at work but started coming late or taking frequent sick leaves this one of the indicator for burnout or somebody whose whose work performance gets slower that he is not working at that particular speed at which he is expected to so he although uh, to compensate that he may be arriving late and going late but still he is not able to achieve the workload which is being assigned to him or her of course clinical days shouting at the patient shouting at the colleague shouting at your trainees is something which is uh, common as a, which is a common manifestation of burnout then by time more and more you proceed further in the burnout you become more and more rigid so there is you have poor tolerance uh, for any kind of ambiguity or any kind of change and you are not able to compromise and you have a lot of difficulty in prioritizing things and often you keep on complaining so you, you people recognize you as a whistle, whistle blower that you're going to take, go and tell the administration that he's doing this he's doing that and so on rather than focusing on your work again a lot of bypass syndrome when we uh, we all understand what is bypass so basically that when a junior colleagues for example a junior resident directly goes and starts talking to the consultant about the patient and bypasses the senior resident in between or a, a senior resident bypasses the consultant in charge of the case or the unit in charge and directly goes and talk to the head of the department that's again a, one of the sign of the that he is not happy and he's not doing things and again uh, people may start having problems in the exams or the academics or they are not sure about the career choice and they want to leave medicine and they get disillusioned from the medicine and of course many of them will also have inside failure means when I say that you try to criticize them for an academic thing or something that you want to tell that you this is what how you can improve your performance they may take it negatively and start feeling that they have been victimized so or they start becoming a lot of defensive or they start counter challenging that's again an indicator that somebody is suffering from burnout so the common complaints people those who come with burnout or talk about burnout when you are chatting with your colleagues at the coffee place or anywhere somebody who says that he does not have control over his work environment he lacks administrative support and somebody talks about that he's not able to perform things which he's supposed to perform that there are a lot of uh, competing demands and there's the overall sense of futility in working that's where you need to think that he requires help so uh, uh, they, 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 there could be more broader psychiatric manifestations starting from loss of motivation to depression anxiety sleep disturbances or basically feeling of helplessness tra trapped or defeated and so on so, and in terms of physical form uh, that there is lower immunity frequent infections frequent health related problems headache muscle uh, make all this should make us aware that am i experiencing burnout or not we need to evaluate ourselves or when you start procrastinating at your work you start refusing to take responsibilities that's where you will feel that you are uh, having a lot of uh, burnout 
So is it same as depression? Definitely not. That burnout does not lead to a global uh, impairment as we see in depression, but it primarily affects the work. And it is also not same as stress because stress actually makes you get more engaged at your work and you start doing work you want to perform. But burnout, we actually you start detaching from your work. So or you start getting they are disengaged from your work. So it's not same as stress. And there are a lot of myths about burnout that we often all feel that it's not my problem, it's problem of somebody else. We should not be thinking from that perspective. And uh, there, there are things that you, you feel that I, it's me only who have to change myself and do things and uh, I need to change. It's not that everybody goes through it and burnout and depression is only affecting me. I'm only suffering, others are not suffering. That's also not true. And many people think that taking mental health care is not useful, it does not work, which is again a wrong uh, notion. And people often decide about quitting, which is again, is, is a common thing when we try to understand the burnout. Uh, when, when we talk about the prevention of physician burnout, uh, that uh, we, we need to understand that we need to lower the stress levels and the drain which it, they are producing and improve our abilities to recharge our energy account, which is basically understood as that we need to be performing like a competent person. So what sh should we be doing first? The first thing to do is learning to do a balance between work and life. We need to understand that we are humans. We need to have a life of our own and disengage from work once you are off work. Until unless you don't learn that and you just t keep on taking more and more responsibility of work and keep on extending your working hours because you have more responsibility. Many people start enjoying that you, you're working and you, 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 people are calling more and more for lectures, doing this, doing that. You're trying to do more research, you get more grants and everything somebody is asking you to do. So that then you forget in terms of that you, you think that you're going to achieve a lot of things and people are recognizing you and you start neglecting your life. That's something which we need to all refrain from at, at the faculty level and at the resident level when, when you're talking, when I talk about the work-life balance, you need to understand that you may have long working hours, but when you're off work, try to have some hobbies, recreational activities so that you can recharge yourself, spend time in your hobbies so that you, you, once you come back to your work, you are fresh enough to move further. And when we talk, try to talk about the prevention and management, because almost the same kind of strategies are being talked about prevention and management. We talk about the strategies at three levels, but one is a individual level. Second is a modifying the organizational structure and the work process and improving the fitness between the physician and the organization. So that's where we, we need to understand. In terms of the simple measures, uh, we, when we try to understand at the individual levels, we all need to draw a boundary for ourselves which we are not going to cross. And we know how to start our work. I start your day with a relaxing ritual. Uh, I often go to a coffee room to start my day and talk to some of my colleagues, interact with them. That's my way of relaxing in the morning before I start my clinical work. And adopt healthy eating, exercising and the sleeping habit. Set boundaries that where you're, how much you're going to do, how much you're not going to do. Take daily breaks from the technology because this is something technology has actually, we just keep on checking our email and any professional information is coming and so around the clock you are there. So preferably avoid doing that and always look at your side which you think is a creative side which you can use it for some other purpose other than the professional purpose and learn to manage your stress. Then uh, when we talk about the rest, we, we need to understand that we need to spend time with the family, have a personal physician to assess our well-being. When I say have a personal physician, at least you need to have a colleague with whom you can discuss issues and seek guidance depending on the kind of competency he or she has and of course setting limits on hours and choosing certain type of medical practice which you are going to do. and being positive and maintaining a balance in life. Now, stress management techniques, again, we all understand that you, you, you can do different kind of relaxation or other stress management te techniques to take care of your health and uh, whatever you prefer to do that. Of course, do not have friends, those who are workaholic. Although you may not be workaholic, but if you have too many workaholic friends, they will increase your anxiety and 
force you to become workaholic. So it's better always to keep away from them. And they, 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 one of the best defense is a good offense. So do what you like, not that that uh, you are forced to do things and like what you do. So basically, some of my colleagues say that when something which I don't consider work, and I am very comfortable in doing that. So, so, so learn to do that kind of a distinction, and always try to fight out if something is disrupting your work-life balance. And always look at the three things in life. The most important is the meaning, purpose, and worth it. That you you may end up having 100 publications or 200 publications, but is it worth it? What you are doing for that? Running 10 uh, extramural projects or five intramural projects and so on, or uh, doing 10 things at a time, doing four OPDs in a week, is it worth it? At the end, what are you losing in doing that? Of course, uh, taking care of self, we all go fly from one place to other and we know that what, what is the first thing the air hostess comes and tells us that we, we need to be t doing, k taking care of ourselves first and whenever the professional help is needed, that should not be avoided. And of course, uh, there are two different things when we talk about relationships. People in general say that do not develop personal relationship at workplace. They can be distressing, they can be problematic, they can, they can lead to a lot of problems because when at, at when there are competing, in, in competing interests at workplace and you are emotionally attached to your colleague and he or she doesn't under, uh, doesn't do the way you want to do things or you think your interest is compromised, it ultimately end up losing relationships. The other way to is always try to maintain cordial relationship with people at workplace and maintain a relationship where you can do some amount of give and take in this, uh, when you want to grow together. It's not that you always, there's always a tendency that somebody who is senior always thinks that it's my right and the junior has to follow it. And at times juniors end up feeling that uh, the senior is not allowing me to do things, he's stopping my progress. But it's not that. We all need to learn to give and take. And of course, at the same time, we need to also develop good relationship at our, at the, our family. Again, uh, the kind of having an attitude towards work, finding meaning in the work, enjoying your work and limiting your working hours, having a control over your schedule is important and always have a positive outlook about life and identifying the and acting on the values which you hold for yourself and stressing the work-life balance becomes important as one of the life philosophy that I'm not going to compromise my family life because of my work. At the end of the day, I'm, I'm saying this, uh, we all are working in a government setup Nobody can stop your salary, whether you're working or not. And the basic principle which works here, if you're doing more work, you'll be given more work. Somebody who's not doing anything will not be given work. That's the basic philosophy you need to remember and you should try to keep away from that. Of course, uh, if, you, if you are able to practice spirituality and you think uh, prayers, meditation, uh, writing journal for yourself, showing gratitude to others helps do follow that and prioritize your work. Many times we end up doing things which do not carry any urgency or priority and we waste a lot of time and then later start having a lot of stress. And of course, uh, the, the, when you're trying to uh, practice priority, the principle of so the so-called the, uh, the Moscow method uh, needs to be remembered, which is more important for the trainees to understand that always start with the must do things, do them first, then should do things, then I could do things and I won't do things. So if, if you make that list for yourself, for your work every day, you will, you will end up uh, doing things which are required and will not enter into an interpersonal problem or a stressful situation in your life. So, so this is basically that you, I must have, should have, could have and will not have. So that's again when I say in terms of prioritizing life. Uh, one is doing it and second is having it. Again, building resilience, that having a realistic recognition, over overcoming denial and those kind of cultures. How much time I have? Five more minutes? Will that be okay? Yeah. So, uh, of course, uh, taking time away from the work and when we try to talk about 
building resilience again basically we talk about how we start uh, connecting ourselves with our work and how how much we show our empathy the what level of work surge we have how we deal with the politics how we take a step back what is our vision perspective and purpose in life we need to follow that and the personal characteristics which are going to help you out uh, from the burnout is amount of humor you have and how much adaptable you have how much optimi optimistic confident you are at your workplace so that that and you also need to have a strong management support the team culture and that's where we as clinicians as as, as consultants are responsible for to make this so called team culture in with people where we are working and the social support of course you have all these three things will take care of whatever challenges you end up face, facing so basically at the organizational level when we talk about if we want to reduce uh, the burnout we need to talk about having a sustainable workload that what workload a person can sustain if somebody cannot sit in a opd and see maybe 200 patients a day so we need to understand that we need to cut down on the patient load or we need to understand what is the optimal level of workload which a physician can take then uh, we need to uh, understand and I, I first, uh, at the organizational level that there should be a lot of feeling of control and reward that somebody who's working should be rewarded from a different perspective and he should be recognized and the reward is that it is he the things which he is doing should be glorified so that he feels motivated to do, do things and we also need to create a sense of community that we all grow together and move forward and there should be a lot of fairness respect and justice at the workplace and we we are, have meaningful and we we value each other's work so uh, physicians should be, provi be provided lot of physician autonomy when when they are doing work it, it's not that a junior assistant is working the senior assistant is going to say no you are going to do it this way only or senior assistant is working and the consultant is going to say if at one level you see that he or she has become competent enough to manage things he should be given autonomy and adequate support staff which we know that how uh, how much support staff we have and in in, in, in institutes uh, like ours or other government institutes the support staff is minimal so we need to work at that level the organization should do that and again collegial uh, working environment needs to be created and we should value uh, the medical profession that the core part of the mission is very clear we all need to understand how we things are going to move and we need to be focusing on taking care of people moving towards more of excellence working as a team to help our own community and we should minimize the work home interference so flexibility of the child care and the scheduling can be done working hours can be uh, rescheduled for people those who require that kind of needs and uh, of course ensuring vacation and not allowing people to do overtime and other things is again important and providing adequate mentoring and uh, allowing them to have periodical sabbatical from the workplace again helps so this is just a summary of that so at the organization level again we need to educate and increase awareness of people about physician burnout many people don't understand don't recognize that and we should need to have a designated time for reflection we often have faculty meeting resident time meeting so one of them can be converted into reflecting back how much we are feeling stressed at workplace what we think are important and we need to teach practical skills how to deal with the burnout and build community so that we, we are able to uh, take care of each other and of course uh, whenever the care somebody requires mental health care that needs to be provided and mental health care should be organized in such a way that anybody can contact uh, a mental health professional at the time of need the 24 hour crisis helpline should be provided across all institute we have that service so anybody is interested can always avail that and of course peer support is very important in india we we, we all work we all know the crab theory that we all are if we are put in a box and one crab is trying to come, uh, go out, others are trying to pull out, uh, pull him down rather than allowing him to go. So, but the reverse should be done that we need to provide support to each other. So, uh, we often uh, talk about when we interact that how are you, isn't it? That's where uh, is the dictum, but as a psychiatrist when we meet each other, uh, we ask each other, how am I doing today? So, so, so where I ask my other colleague to tell me 
what does he think about me, whether I am fine or not. That's the culture we need to develop. Of course, we need to improve our uh, workplace environment, that we need to review the uh, work, work schedule and the workload, and we need to have an optimal workflow, so that which is realistic, which is achie achievable in terms of patient care, documentation, and whatever the assistance is required. And we need to transform the institutional culture, and we need to have culture of wellness at the workplace and support the personal resilience strategies. So a positive work environment at the organization level also can uh, have a lot of so-called protective factors, ensure job security and provide the child care opportunities and maternity and paternity leaves and so on. Uh, just So uh, what are the barriers why people don't seek help? This is the, the, some of the barriers which people talk about that they lack time, they prefer to do self-management and there's lack of convenient access to services, and con there are a lot of concerns about the confidentiality and the stigma. This is the, what the Western literature suggests, so we, we need to understand this. And in terms of Indian data, again, we see that many physicians or the medical students don't seek help uh, for, for uh, their mental and physical health. And if you look at uh, the basic reasons, Again, in the Indian data also suggests that there is a lot of lack of time, fear of unwanted intervention, unsure about what, where to seek help, lack of confidentiality, stigma, cost, and other things. So at the institutional level, we need to emphasize these issues that these barriers can be taken care of. And the data from our own institute again suggests that people don't seek help because of feeling stigmatized. And the basic common thing our residents come and say when we when they're seeking help from us, that my colleagues are going to think that I'm a weak person, I have a mental illness and so on, and they don't seek help. So that's where we need to understand that when somebody of our, one of our colleagues has a mental health issue, we should learn not to stigmatize him or not to pass derogatory remarks to them so that they stop, otherwise what happens, they actually stop taking help further. And they often fear that they, they'll be considered as somebody who's trying to serve away from his responsibility, and they, they always feared that what would be the impact of the help seeking on their career and further what would be the attitude of the faculty and of course the time constraint. So it's, it's a request for to all everyone involved here that we, we should learn not to stigmatize our colleagues who are going through stress and are seeking help. So the higher barriers to seek mental health Care, care, care in the, in our uh, country, and the, this also provides uh, physician despite having problems and the, despite the services are being available. So uh, this is what is the new NMC guidelines, or the NMC has issued this notification. If you look at this, what does this read? And this is from the uh, PG uh, committee that uh, the PG medical students. Uh, uh, how we need to change the environment that by ensuring adequate rest, weekly offs, counseling for those who are under stress, arranging yoga sessions and regular basis, on regular basis, sanctioning leaves when required and respecting their dignity by providing produ uh, positive, conducive working environment. And a committee may be constituted to look into the complaints and grievances, including anonymous complaints, grievances, which may be submitted by the PG students either through mail or received in a drop box uh, specially placed for the purpose. And uh, the, for, for the, all medical colleges and institutes are therefore requested to take necessary steps for taking care uh, of the mental health and well-being of the PG medical students studying and working with them. An action re taken report also must be submitted. This is what is the most recent, this is about two weeks back, if you look at 10th of August is the date is being issued by the NMC, so this issue is getting flagged now across the country, and we all as uh, students, as teachers should be aware of it, and we should all work together to fight out the physician burnout. So to conclude, physician burnout among doctors is a global phenomenon, and it leads to poor quality of care provided to the patient, increases medical errors, and poor retention of patient in addition to the poor health outcome. So how we can reduce, we need to enhance the resilience and the work engagement at the individual doctor level and creating a positive work environment that helps the doctor to achieve a work-life balance and enjoy job security and provide a family-friendly work environment that will prevent the burnout. Thank you.
thank you so much for a very nice overview of the problems, some problems which are kind of day-to-day -day faced. Uh, we, I just have one thought while you were talking about a sustainable workload. Unfortunately, I think in our circumstances, to, we do, because we don't have a stop on patients, especially like in places like an emergency, where there can be a bit, around eight to 10 patients on a bed. So that, I mean, the workload is in a way not really sustainable, but there, we, there is nothing which either us or the organization can do to stop that. So in this situation, not only from an emergency point of view, from residents also, you know, we do tell them that they should relax and all. But if you're working 12 to 14 hours a day, I think in practice, it becomes a little difficult. This is just one thought. The rest, of course, we're open for any questions, comments. If you would like to come here, whichever way is I'm, easy. I'm comfortable. Fine. No issues. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's, that, uh, that's that's the exact point which I am trying to make. That uh, at the administrative level, at the level of department, or at the institute level, uh, the the emergency duty hours can be reduced, maybe, or the offs can be increased, or or at the same time, the emergency posting duration at a one stretch can be reduced. So there are different methods which different people have adopted to so-called reduce the work-life imbalance or uh, reduce the level of stress among the physicians. So that is where we, have, that's where I'm saying that the, at the institutional level, at the organizational level, we need to start making these changes. Otherwise, uh, in the long run, what we are going to see, actually more and more competent people are not going to come to this profession. That, that's what is the biggest fear in long run. That's where we need to understand. Dr. Manjinder. Yeah, uh, I appreciate your comments and uh, what we need to understand that uh, when I was talking about the resilience and other things, uh, unfortunately, uh, if I look from my perspective and that is what is general being talked about, uh, in general, the new and new generation which is coming in, their social skills and resilience is not as good as which is required to be part of the medical profession. Uh, they, their parents ask them or they have this aspiration to become a medical professional, they enter into it. The usual tendency nowadays, they don't, they don't carry too much of clinical skills once they are coming to the PG and then suddenly they are exposed to patient load. So this is where the whole curriculum and the way the teaching is going on right from the undergraduate or maybe 10 plus 2 needs a revamp and how we need to make things change so that somebody doesn't end up coming to PG and then starts facing this situation. Uh, things they, they need to be primed and the things have to change at the undergraduate level maybe that they have uh, have to have more clinical skills so that they don't feel this kind of a problem that's one internship is not being taken care so there are a lot of issues in the whole career which we are seeing and that possibly requires some amount of revamp there's somebody here who would put up their hand
yeah so so uh, you need to understand that uh, you need to give benefit of doubt to start with i'll put it this way so at least have a dialogue with the person sit down and try to understand what are his or her issues so so may, may, I, i will not go with a preju- prejudice that he is a lazy person because uh, somebody who has entered let's say into pgi uh, as a junior resident first year junior resident also he had sleepless nights before he entered so so to start with somebody who is reaching to this place i don't think is a lazy person so so we need to give that benefit of doubt but i said the other thing which we often end up doing we compare with ourselves i work for 18 hours why he is not able to work for 12 hours that's not the thing which we we should be doing it so how do we define laziness if somebody who is so used to his work life balance working from 8 to 5 or 9 to 5 may not be liked by a consultant working in pgi so that is where we we also need to change our mind frame where we draw the so called uh, comparator or uh, with whom are we comparing when we consider somebody as a lazy person yeah pratik See, this is where I am saying that, uh, uh, for example, if I have to talk to one of my faculty colleagues and I think he is going through it, I will have no inhibition in going and asking him how are you doing. and i have approached the topic that what is happening at that particular issue what is happening at uh, your level that kind of inhibition is there we think that we are entering into somebody's personal space that that is the kind of generational gap one which is there that we think that if i ask somebody how are you doing how things are the other person will say there is none of your matter that's how you have been reacting to people also so that is where there is an issue about personal space so you are right that we need to have more uh, so called interactive sessions to understand this but the other thing is part of the peer support is at least inform the concerned authorities for example he is working in xyz unit you inform the senior resident there or the faculty there that i think one of my colleague who is working in your unit is stressed now then it becomes his or her responsibility to take the things from there but if you don't do anything and you allow your colleague to suffer Uh, yeah I, i agree with you that is where i am saying the personality also is, comes in uh, that that is where i am just saying two things one is at the individual level that when you are going through 70% and your colleague is at the 90% but when both of you are off work at least unwind together spend time together so that you become fresh when you come back and flag the issue with the administration with the organization that something which is not sustainable something with the workload which is not sustainable we if we just keep on allowing that to keep going on we are damaging the mental health of the physicians and also the whole system that if we are not providing quality care we are just talking about the quantity care it does not help that is we were that, that we at a, at the organization level are going wrong that we are now just talking about number of patients seen but how many patients we have actually cured and provided a quality care nobody is talking about let's do an audit and evaluate are we providing a quality care i don't think so the quality of care of pgi is going down as the number of patients is increasing right um yeah uh, i think we're uh, finishing time now and with this we thank you thank for you this uh, very nice session and have a good week everyone